Q and A time, Q and A. Right on, brother. Good to Yeah, you too. Yeah. Yeah. Most likely BC. And if you come out, do me a favor, bring out the books with you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Books as well. Yeah. It's there for me. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hope I answered some of the questions. What are you going to say? Yeah. 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 <coughs> Are we ready for Q and A? Or P's and Q's? that? What happened to some of the other brothers? You, you and I talked okay. um, right after your talk about um, what yeah. brother that you and I brought to you. All right. Okay, I got a question here. Uh, this brother over here, uh, Tom, wants to know if I know what happened to some of their brothers. Uh, quite a few brothers have passed away. I think what he wants to talk about is, is a good friend of his, a good friend oh, of mine. Oh, man, I knew. Man, I knew. <clears throat> that you knew. Well, I know that he knew. Mario Gonzalez, brother Dalu, and my sister knew him well. We uh, all I can say about Dalu is that uh, he died a pretty bad, a horrible death. He was shot in Brooklyn by the cops. <clears throat> but I can tell you that Dalu was was a warrior's warrior. He was a man who was fearless, and he was not afraid to engage the cops or anybody that uh, threatened his right to be Dalu, threatened his right to be a sovereign individual spirit that he was. <clears throat> he was a great man, a very beautiful man. Many people loved him and respect him and honored him, and I'm one of them. Thank you. Another question? Yes. Uh, as, as far as concern with the uh, inner... You know, I understand I'm with the energy, with the with self-defense, and self-defense in, in any circumstance. I guess my question is, when it's people who you love and you care about, and they're acting, I mean, for example, like within the prisoners, uh, and a situation arises, i just just curious your, your best way, someone you don't want to hurt, but is acting in an undesired manner, that's harmful to you, but you know, it's not, the, it's not a police officer, it's not a... It's not a trooper, it's not a president, you know, it's someone you care and love about. I'm just curious, just throwing a question out there. Well, you just tell them to smarten up? Yeah. <laughs> 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 if they respect, man, if they respect that you got the, you know, the ability to help smarten them up, if they have to, they'll get the message. If they don't get the message, then smarten them up. You know, I mean, I, you know, there's a lot of people, <clears throat> you know, in, in this time that we live in, I mean, the, 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 real, the reality is, is that when people, there's a lot of people that they're just not made to engage the, the greater powers, if you will, the repressive powers. They're just not made that way. There has to be things in a person's life that teaches them or, or that you've been put to the test. And every human being is put to some kind of test in your life. Now you can either engage the test and increase your fire, or you cannot engage the fire, engage the test and let the fires go out. 
which is a simple analogy, but it's, it's, it's the way energy works in this universe, the way every human being's spirit works. It's got to be your beliefs. Your beliefs have got to check out. What you believe in has got to correspond to the world you live in around you, how you see things objectively and bring it into your subjective mind, into your heart. How you process the information around you. Now, if you're at a point where you process the information that's gotten you this far, uh, of the realities around you, the conditions around you, and those conditions make you want to fight and resist, and you've got other people that don't see the same reality because they're too busy watching Man Survivor and, and trying to go out and get that beer and, you know, and become a couch potato. You know, and, and, yet, and yet sometimes they get strong opinions and they insult you. You know what, a lot of times you got to sit down and try to educate. But if somebody's not ready to be educated, in the world that we live in today, we don't have time to sit there and, and teach the world anymore. If you don't know something for your survival today, you know, you just, there's a lot, there's a lot of people when things get at their very worst, as I see things is quickly devolving to, that if, there's going to be a lot of people you're going to have to leave behind. You're just going to have to leave behind. People are going to have to sell, buy sanctuaries for themselves everywhere. You can't bring everyone with you, Austin, but they'll weigh you down. They'll weigh you down in your attempt to get to a sanctuary. We're living in a time right now where um, I really believe that we're at the juncture <clears throat> of the prophecies of Dagana Rita. We're right at the juncture now of what uh, our prophet and political statement Dagana Rita told us 700 years ago. And I believe that where we're at right now basically is that we're, Dagana Rita saw two ships fighting. Well, they actually described them as serpents. And he saw them fighting at sea, and these serpents became in battle. They got to fighting one. One was a red serpent and a white serpent. And basically, the fight started out slow, and it became so furious that uh, it made the trees burn from the top down and the oceans to boil and the fish to turn on their bellies. It made the earth crack, the cr earth go on fire and crack all over the earth cracks and made these strange bugs, biological diseases and weapons. And then he was talking about nuclear warships going to battle, getting ready to battle at sea between the red and the white representing capitalist ideologies and communist ideologies or as they're called economically. <clears throat> and I believe that's how he saw it 700 years ago. And I'm taking the liberty to say what I say because I, I've studied a lot in my life and to, and, and to draw these analogies. But now, he also said that when that battle became so strong that people would be forced to, there would be so much fighting going on. There would be horrible things happening worldwide. People would have to the mountains and head out to the hilly country to find their protection. And as this world goes into this big battle, the people would have to find their places for sanctuary, places that would keep them safe. And then when that happened, he said, uh, as these, these people were battling with one another and fighting in these horrible wars, these wars by fire, he said they were looking up in the sky and they would see this light that would come and would scare the people. Well, I, I hate to say this right now, but even as we're talking at this very moment, um, within one month there's going to be this planet moving through our universe. It's called Elin. Elin. It's also known as Planet X. It's a, it is a dwarf sun, which is five times the size of Jupiter, and it goes in a, in a reverse direction around our solar system every 3,600 years. It's usually about 16 billion miles away in our solar system, but if you go Planet X, <coughs> NASA, you'll see, the, you'll see they got it on radar right now. And they're keeping it very quiet. And we're all in for a big surprise here, but I, I got a film we're going to come through it. But if there's a lot of people, we're not going to come through it. The real rocky road getting ready to go on right now. So what's going to happen is this planet, 
this planet's going to come, and it is estimated that by October 16th, it's going to be closest to the Earth about 20 million miles away as opposed to 16 million. But it's so huge when it goes in within our system. It's what's, what's causing all these earthquakes and disruptions that's going on right now. We're getting the beginning of the process. We're going to see it really increase to the point where this Earth may tip on its axis. I can't see for sure. There's speculation on what it has already done every 3,600 years, what has been surmised. Velikovsky wrote a book called The Collision of Worlds, where this was all detailed. <clears throat> but when it does pass, and I don't believe it's going to hit the Earth, but when it passes through, we're going to have to pass through all that debris and dust it left. And it's going to be like missiles with all these parts flying off of this planet. I don't know how hot this planet could get, but that might be what they're going to be. It's also talking about the oceans boiling, the amount of heat. But there's also going to be, at that time, great things can happen after this. Because what he says is that all the people would come together and assemble in the hilly country. And when they came together, there would be people who would be returned to return the great law to the people. There would be people, and the peacemaker himself would be returned in the form of what is called the Iroquois visionary. He would have the power to teach these new religions or the way to see one's true self. And when this happened, he says, he said, he said, when this all this was was coming to to a head, he said, the people would find these sanctuaries, and when all the Indian peoples came together, they would all stand proud with one another, and they would embrace each other as brothers, and they would have non-Indian people come with them, and all the people would that were protected during that time and protected in those hilly countries. When they came together, he said they would renew their faith and their respect of the true intent of the great law. That great law which has sustained us for 700 years that the peacemaker brought. Now I think it's very important to understand this one question here. This one thing that when Ayahuita, when the peacemaker brought the great law to Ayahuita, who was a very tall, powerful Mohawk war chief. The first one he brought her to was Ayahuita. And uh, when he had seen, Ayahuita was such a war chief, he had killed many, many men in battle. And one day he saw Ayahuita, whose daughters, seven daughters had been killed by the evil of Aratajo from Anandaga the Onondaga region. And when he saw this, his daughters had been killed with bad medicine. He sat down and cried for days. And the peacemaker says, Ayahuita, why are you crying? And he said, because I'm sitting here now. I'm sitting here now crying for the seven, my seven daughters that I love that are dead. And now I'm thinking about all those mothers and brothers and sisters and family of all the men that I killed in the same pain they must be going through. And at that point he says, I am totally able to believe and accept this great peace you bring to the nation. So that, and the great, so what I'm saying right here, we're, looking, we're in times right now, this very moment that we're talking, so close, and the rest of the world don't know what's going on. We're going to take it by surprise. And that's when everything else is going to start escalating, including the wars. So we have got to have a plan for survival. And again, I say, that's why it gets right back to your question. When you say, well, what am I going to do with these? Well, look. Keep your eyes open because the clock is running. It's running, and you better find, you just better, God, if you don't have a place, you better start looking real quick. Because you're going to need a sanctuary. It's not going to be good for a while. 
And then uh, again, you say, yeah, look, if the, you can't keep up to speed, anybody that's not keeping up with you is going to hold you down. I intend to survive. I intend to take care of my family, so my children, the best I can. And I, I'm, I don't know, I've been talking about that place for a long time, right? But I, I, also, I also had a lot of growing up to do. My whole life was inside of a cage. I had to come to, 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 to grips with reality. I had to come to grips with myself. I had to be truthful in the way that I could be truthful with you. But first of all, I had to be truthful with me. Because if I can be truthful with me, then I can reflect to you our need. Truth is nothing but a, 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 a correct reflection of what really is, without any exaggeration, bending it or twisting it. You deal with it as in analyzing it for what it truly is. And you deal with it. So, your, to your question back there, all I can say is, you know, if, if, if you're slow, you blow. Then we're the game. <laughs> I'll take the question. Okay. Hey, in picking your choo in picking and choosing your battles, you know, yes. and all the different fights you have fought, what what is one of your your best fights that you picked that you that you took most pride in, and one that you would rather probably not have taken one? And what's your next? What what would your next goal be? Well, uh, oh, oh. Or? well, you know, I, I tell you, he's he's definitely on my list. But let me let me. <coughs> Hey brother, good see you. Man. Okay, let's go around. Take care, everybody. Um, my my fight. Uh, all of my fights are are the culminations of my experience of where I'm at, where I was at at that time in my life, and the degree of my understanding. I I am a prolific reader. I read. <coughs> Like, that's my thing. I read, 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 read. I read everybody's stuff. I read it all. But I can tell you right now, as I get it, <clears throat> as I read stuff or as I see it, as I analyze it, I put it out there. Fortunately, I've been given a gift, a gift to speak. I have a gift, and I know I have a gift. And that gift is no accident. My gift is a blessing for these times. And <clears throat> right now, I just came from a, a conference across the way over there in Toronto, a four-day conference, listening to testimony of all these 15, or listening to the testimony of, of many scholars <clears throat> that are architects and engineers scholars in, uh, <clears throat> that were discussing the real potential, the evidence that was laid before a panelist, uh, four, four panelists, one was a former judge, but, uh, that was a judge from Italy that heard the Aldo Moro case. <clears throat> but the point is, they were sitting there taking in evidence at this commission hearing in Toronto at Ryerson College for the last four days about the use of military made explosives on the Twin Towers. Unabashedly, I'm going to tell you right now, very unabashedly, my fight right now is to expose 9-11 as an inside job by the United States government. And the reason for that was so they could justify the continuation of his rape, theft, and murder, acquisition of resources, gas, oil, pipelines, Caspian Sea Basin, and unbridled aggression to get those resources of the world. This is the last battle, and yet we need the, uh, the, the Project for the New American Century, which was a document that was produced by Paul Wolfowitz, one of the neo main neo uh, neoconservatives of the Bush administration, basically trying to get $90 billion for the military industrial, right, from the military industry and from Congress, but Congress, it says, will never give us $90 million. So therefore, the only way we would get $90 million is if some kind of cataclysmic, catastrophic event like another Pearl Harbor. Well, basically what they told us is that they were going to do this. And I know it's hard to hear. I know it's hard to hear. The first thing we're going to want to do is deny that it was an inside job. But some of us that know and see and know how they work cannot deny it. And if you really are serious, 
of our survival, you got to confront that reality. You got to know the enemy. They're on the last vestiges of their system. This system is getting ready to collapse. It's getting ready to economically, it's getting ready to fold and implode. This system is going under. So basically, they have to manufacture reasons that they can justify incursions into sovereign countries like Iraq, sovereign countries like Afghanistan, Pakistan, Libya, Syria, Iran, Russia, China. We're on the last phases of their power control, their economic system, their ability to control this thing called capitalism, this thing called colonialism, this thing called imperialism. We're in the last phases of their empire. The Ganymedes told us about there was going to come a time when the golden serpent and the silver serpent would eat and devour so much they'd start out with just little, little, little critters. You know, but then Canada and the United States, they are just starting to eat up all the resources. They get so big, so huge. And then you know, if they can't eat nothing else, they have to eat each other. The inevitability, they turn on themselves because they just stole it all and destroyed everything in their path. So, if you look at 9-11, Google. 9-11, follow the money, splitting the sky. I'll show you for two hours who was behind 9-11. Okay? A lot of people, again, don't want to hear that. And it's okay. It's okay. But those people that do want to hear it and do want to get in touch with it and do, do want to deal with it have got to understand, they have got to understand that the biggest battle right now is to show the people who they really are because if you're informed of what they're really doing, if you watch and analyze what they're doing, all you can do is come up with a plan to defend yourself against it as it gets worse. And believe me, not only is the whole corporate, military, industrial complex, the World Trade Organization moving to suck up the sovereignty of nations in Libya, NATO bombings, drone bombings in Pakistan, a sovereign country with nuclear weapons, Afghanistan to run those pipelines right down from the Caspian Sea Basin. Dick Cheney's energy policy already showed he broke up the Caspian Sea and France has this part of the oil and gas, U.S. has this, Canada has that, Great Britain has that. They cut it up just like one of those certain lines sticks you would see with the dotted lines. This is who's got what. Now, the thing about it is when the, the, you can't go into another country and say, I'm coming in here and taking your country, taking over this country, and we're bringing democracy to your country, right? You can't and violate, according to international law, the sovereignty of another nation, can you? No, you can't. But if you say, oh, you killed 3,000 Americans and internationalists from all over the world, and you were Muslim countries, and you just happen to have all the oil in the world, and all the gas, and all the resources in the world that we want in Saudi Arabia, Iran. Russia and China, the China, the U.S. and China are fighting for control of all these other African countries and their resources, oil. So you have to study it. You say, oh, okay. But let me tell you this. Not only are they, their purpose is that they have to have an enemy. They get the emotions of the people going. They say, we're going to just, we're going to get the terrorists. We're going to install democracy. Oh, yeah, by, by the way, we're going to take your oil, too. That's just the payment for what we've done for you. It's a scam. It's a scam. We've all been hoodwinked. But here's the biggest thing, the biggest threat. They intend to destroy us. Homo Yomwe, Iroquois, the great law. And it's up to us. And some of us will have a very special power in order to stop them from doing that. And there's a power that you can't see. It's a power that's on the other side. It's on the other side. And there will be one and some that will have the ability to open those skies 
and let those powers through. So that's where we're at right now. But that's something we know. And that's something you look at a little bit more. And it's coming out more and more. And it's coming out faster and faster. And eventually, it's going to happen. But we have to rally up our forces. We have to unite with our allies of good heart, true heart. And we got to get ready. We got to get ready for the new hope now, man, because it's coming. It's a big hope now. It's a big struggle. But we got to be fearless. So my biggest battle is exposing the supreme hoodwinkers. Supposing, exposing the supreme scam. The supreme manufacturers of death. The merchants of death. When we expose them, then we <coughs> we were told when you're ready to go, get that tobacco out and call out the name of the God of Rita. Let's go. And he'll return. That's where we gotta go next. We gotta go back to our tobaccos. Right now. We gotta start praying. Praying hard. But our prayers are not fictitious. Our prayers bring results. So that's why I believe we're at right now. I could be wrong. I don't think so. Any else? Anybody else? I guess that was pretty much enough said, eh? <laughs> defend our land. That's why they're still afraid of us Mohawks. And we all are. Because we defend it. And we're the biggest threat. Because we uphold the great law. The great law. The guy in the goal. The guy in the goal. Oh, okay. What do you want? Yeah, thank you. 